What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Tactical Troops Anthracite Shift. I took a little bit of time prior to making this video to kind of play through the first couple of missions and the general feeling that I got from it is that it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a top-down mixture between like XCOM and like if you've ever played the Necromunda game or you've played the Mordheim game and the way that the game is arranged with its presentation of sort of like AP and like move allotment and stuff like that it sort of reminds me of that as well. This game is campaign based. I don't know how much it opens up after the first couple missions but I have played them and so it's a game where you've got a team of space marines and you're working your way through a planet that's infested with bugs after what I can only guess is kind of an accidental crash. I don't think we meant to be on this planet, but you know what? I'm doing my part. I'm remembering, I'm remembering Buenos Aires right now, okay? So let's dive on in. We're going to spend about 25, 30 minutes with the game. See if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this video, you did want to throw it on your wish list, I've got a link for you down below in the description so that you can check the game out on Steam. Aside from that, you'll also find a link to my Discord, which is kind of like my major community hub at this point. It's gone from a couple hundred people up to like thousands. Honestly fantastic. Great place to find people to play games with and whatnot. And then on top of that, you can also find a link to my Twitch stream where I'm live pretty much every single day of the week. Let's get going. It's time for that single player action. Uh, let's pick a portrait right here. What do we want our guy to look like? He looks like the kind of guy that gets stuff done. Although she looks kind of badass too, dude. Some decent portraits on in here. I think I'll go with this guy right here. He's got the beard, you know what I mean? He's got like the nice little swoopty comb over. I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, his name will, of course, be. What do I, what do I know? I'm gonna name him. I'm gonna name him Rat. Oh, dude, my caps lock is on. I'm gonna name him Rack Rifle McGibbs. That's a name of a man that gets a job done right there. And then he goes home and he drinks whiskey and he smokes a cigar. As it is decided. All right, let's go ahead and start the game. Blue team, report. Blue two reporting. I've got no visual. Tracking system is offline. Send your coordinates. I'll find you. Got your coordinates. Your floor clicks out from my position. Stand by. Finding the route to your location. Got it. On my way. ETA 40 minutes. Okay. So here we are. Well, we're going to get a load screen first, but that's okay. Every game needs a little bit of time to load. So the game is pretty simple, actually. I'm going to skip through all that stuff right there. Uh, the game is pretty simple. You've got these circles right here around you. And once we have multiple teammates, the system's really going to kind of come together. But this is what sort of reminded me of the Mordheim game to me. It's just kind of like the, the circle around you that designates how far you can move while still retaining an action. And then how far you can move if you wanted to use it all on movement, effectively a sprint. But you're going to give up any agency that you would have otherwise had for, like, you know, attacking. Uh, we've got our character down here in the bottom left. Apparently, we've been designated to support. We've got our HP. This is how much, I think, AP we have left, in all honesty. I'm pretty sure that's my AP meter. Yeah, it's definitely my AP meter. We've got our armor right here. We've got what weapon we're using, which is a CM400 Close Quarters Combat SMG. It might be a rifle. I don't know. It kind of reminded me of an SMG when I was shooting it, but then again, it's kind of big, so it might be a space rifle. This can be fired either single tap or it can be fired in full auto. We're going to go ahead and take our full move allotment real fast and move forward. We're going to end our turn because we've got no AP left. There shouldn't be any enemies around, but I'm going to try to speed through these earlier missions about as fast as possible because the later missions are where it actually starts to get interesting. What's that sound? It's a bug. The only good bug is a dead bug. So, we can click once for semi-automatic, or we can hold it down for fully automatic. The first shot requires more AP as you must take aim. That's right, so you'll have a better chance of hitting the enemy if you tap-fire it out. So if we go like, tap, tap, there you go, we dropped him. 
Barker sooner than I hoped. Luckily, that one was small. I'm going to have to be on the lookout for the rest of the flock. Oh, you call it a flock, dude? That's kind of cute. Now I want to keep them as pets. I want to have like 40 or 50 of them in my house just crawling around like big terrifying isopods of death. Oh, no, dude. There's another Barker right there. I'm about to get puked on. Oh, good. He's got poor hand-eye coordination or mouth-eye coordination or whatever. What I do like about this game is that you can do stuff like that right there if you want to and then set up an overwatch in case they try to push that corner. The overwatch can be a little bit weird from time to time. Hey, we got the shot off. Nice. Oh, there's three of them over there? Oh, that's not good. Okay, well, let's zap you, zap you, and zap you. There we go. All nice and done. I strongly recommend you use the tap fire. The first time I played this game, I went in, like, hard. I was like, full auto, brother. Give him the whole magazine. And, like, you're not going to hit anything if you go full auto. I'm just letting you know, like, full auto is fun. It is satisfying and enjoyable. But at the same time, you're not going to score nearly as many hits as if you tap fire out the rifle. I'm telling you to save your AP and tap fire it out. All right, so here we are. Uh, mission one is behind us, and now we're on mission two. There is an equipment screen that we're going to be able to go into as we get further on into the game where you can swap out weapons and armor and all the gear and things that you've found around, but we're not at that point yet, so let's just keep on trucking. Right here, it'll give you a synopsis of what everybody's equipped with. You've got your weapon, you've got your secondary, you've got your armor, and then I think you've got gadgets over here on the sides, although I haven't filled in these ones over here on the sides, but I assume they're for, like, grenades or something. All right, it's going to get a little hairier on in here, but in this mission, we are going to learn how to get gear. So inside this warehouse over here, there should be some gear that we can equip. Uh, something is aware of us. I don't know what's aware of us, but something's aware of us. It just made a bork noise. What's it borking at? We can hold down the out key in order to highlight things. One of the problems I think this game does have mechanically is that sometimes it can be very, very difficult. Like, so if the critters go underneath foliage or whatever, until I found that the out key highlights everything, I was having a lot of trouble targeting them. What I would recommend is that they use a slight fade effect whenever a creature goes underneath, like, a canopy or, like, underneath, like, this rock arch right here so that you can actually see the outline independent of the out key just to keep an eye on it. Also go for your character as well. It's one of those little quality of life things that I would look for. I'm going to set up an overwatch right here, but I'm not going to push, like, super hard into that area because I... There's... Mm. Okay, so there are a great many of you over here is really what we're... All right, well, I'm going to snipe at you, snipe at you, and then we're going to use the remainder of our AP to, like, fall back. I want to get into a better position. If I can use this little nook right here to dance in and out of, I would really, really actually like that and prefer it. Okay. Uh, we got one right here. He's got to go, like, right this second. I don't even know if I can make that shot. Oh, we can hit on accident. That was actually a mechanic that I was not aware of. So I played through a couple of missions, and that never happened before. Apparently, you can fire and miss, but the bullets themselves actually have an active trajectory, meaning if you fire and miss at the target that you want, but the bullet's trajectory takes it into a target in the background, you still get the damage out for that. Interesting. That actually sort of makes full auto a little bit more interesting, especially against tightly gridded groups. This looks like an abandoned warehouse. Let me check and see if there's anything good inside. There's going to be. I mean, it's the tutorial portion of the game. Like, you know there's going to be goodies in there. Let me reload real fast, and then we'll walk on in here. Just walk on in. Get lots of looties. All right, there we go. So we got that crate, and then let's carry. Oh, there's one over here. Okay. I didn't expect there to be one over there. I don't know if he's going to be able to take a shot at me from there. Oh, there's one down here, too. Oh, he made the long bomb shot. What a god. Okay. He's insectoid mark. Oh, my god. Okay, I'm going back inside my house. I don't want to go over there. I'm just going to kind of wait and see if they push me. I don't think they will, but I'm going to use this corner to best effect, and that's sort of what I like about this AP system that the game is using. One thing that I kind of like about it is it makes it very easy to dip and dive back in and out of cover and, like, peek. Whether or not when we get to humanoid enemies, or even if there are humanoid web enemies, whether or not they use tactics like that will remain to be seen. Ooh, I got risky right there, and now I'm going to pay. I tried to squeeze out that second shot, but he had that corner. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, anything else back here? I'm going to get behind the boxes real quick. Oh, we can push the boxes, too. So apparently there's physics involved with the game. Yeah, it's a lot of dead bodies. No ID, no uniforms. Plainly wasn't a firefight. All the evidence is pointing to wild animals. I need to keep my guard up. 
I didn't know you could push the crates either. That's one of those things that I didn't think to try while I was playing around with the beginning portion of the game. Where are these bugs at, dude? My line of sight is unfortunately not as good as I would like it to be. Okay. Uh, let's fall back over here. And I have no problem kind of just like squeezing off shots at them. I think they'll probably fall back. This little brand of Barker over here, they seem to be kind of skittish. They seem to be a little bit jumpy. And so like that should afford us with an opportunity to move up behind cover. Here, yeah. Okay. So we got one right there. Enemy Put down. some shots on him. Brief scouting. Another shot right there, then back behind the rock. Ooh, I don't know where he went. This might be risky. I'm going to pull back behind this rock right here. And we'll just wait and see. It looks like they fell back pretty hard. Squeeze a shot off at him and get behind the rock. There's a good chance we're going to get flanked on the left, though. Like, I don't know how smart the AI is or what kind of plays the AI will attempt to make. It actually doesn't look like they're trying to push up on me, like, at all. I think the AI could actually do with a little bit more aggression here. Like, I know we're in the tutorial portion of the game, but the AI clearly has me outnumbered, and if they just, like, pushed, I'd find myself in a situation where I was actually being threatened. Oh, he can actually tunnel. That's kind of cool. Never seen him do that before. All the other times I've played through this, they, uh, they kind of, like come through and they like take a shot at you but they don't burrow underneath the surface like that so the item that we found is armor very very good that'll actually increase our HP at the cost of making our AP drain faster as we move so it's up to you whether or not that's something you wanted to use but it will give us some extra it will give us a little bit of extra HP downside is we lose a little bit of AP so nothing in this life comes without a cost we don't really have any other guns or anything else that have been set to available I do like the UI of this game actually very very much it's utilitarian and it's sort of like lightweight but it gets the job done and it fits in accordance with kind of the color palette and everything else that's going on inside the overall like gestalt of the design I guess yes, sir. next mission in this mission we're gonna meet our first friend we're gonna have the friendliest of friends Sure took your sweet time getting here, boss. Careful. There's a Barker nest in between us. You can eliminate the pests here and go together or meet on the other side of the lake, but there's only going to be trouble either way. Yeah, dude, I want that loot. I'm definitely not leaving that behind. Roger that, Dempsey. Let's move out. Yeah, dude, I'm definitely going after that. I don't know where the rest of these bugs are at, but I'm going to move over to here, and then we'll take this over to this side. And we'll just kind of move him up a little bit, too. See if we can get him in behind this coral over here. It looks like he's got the same weapon loadout. Oh, wow. I think he hits a little bit harder, actually. He just did 30 damage. Okay, pull back behind the rock. And then we'll set up an overwatch that way in case they try to go through us. And then over here, we'll push up. I don't see anything happening, but we'll go with a double overlapped overwatch right there because that's super safe. And nothing bad ever happened to anybody by making your overwatches overlap each other and intersect like that. Ow, I've been struck. Oh, wow, they pushed me hard. Yes, they pushed me very hard. Alright, you get behind cover. You come up, push. There we go, back them up and then push this way. Apparently hit that. All right. Fair enough. His rifle definitely seems to hit harder. I don't know who this guy is, but he seems to have a much better rifle than my rifle. I'm going to come down this way. We'll end our turn. Grab whatever that is. I mean, it might be something utility that'd be really, really nice. We'll push Frank up. We'll use him as a bit of a shock trooper here because we know yeah. that he's got kind of like the better gun. And so we'll just kind of have him advance. I do like the wildlife and things that fly overhead. That is good for sort of atmospheric building. Ooh, God, there's one over there. Run. All right, you come back over this way, and we've got more buggy contacts. Let's go. Yeah. Just keep pushing up. It doesn't look like they're aware of us. So what I'll do here is I'm actually going to end this turn without using his AP so that we can actually make like a solid push. There's a kill right there. Move up. We'll get into a column over here. Yes, sir. Looks like we've got another one right there. Two more right there. And one of them is one of the big heavy ones too. 
That ability upsets me. I don't like that ability. I find that ability like he can move really, really far and then he still gets to attack. That seems markedly unfair to me. I don't yes, like sir. it very much. I'd prefer it if you'd stop using that ability. I, hear you. I, I know that you hear me, but are you acting in accordance with what you're hearing? That's the, that's the real test here. How many more of these things are over here? Oh, dude. They're coming at us from the ground. The exclamation symbol warns you that an enemy will appear in this spot on the next turn. Okay. And it plays its turn once it's emerged. So we kind of want to, like, fall back and, like, Watching. overwatch it, I guess. Yeah, let's just set up a real solid overwatch Watching. right there. Let's go. Watching. Okay. Watching. Target neutral. Ooh, very nice. Scored some sweet damage right there. Not even from the bullets that hit, but from the bullets that missed. Oh, that's a lake. I thought that that was a rock wall right there. Oh, dude. Oh, no. Okay, so I've played this poorly then. I would have come in much, much wider if I had known that was a lake. I guess I probably should have used my brain and listened when they said that I was fighting around a lake. But, you know, we don't do that around here. Uh, we'll just end it right there. Okay, so he's down. I'm going to have my healthy guy move forward. You'll go wide, but don't over advance. I was going to say, because I'm pretty sure there's going to be more of them. Like, I, I've, got a, I've got a suspicion that there are more bugs. Have you go first. Oh, I overdid it. Okay, fall back, fall back, fall back. You overwatch that entire little area right there. Maybe we score a kill. Oh, he took that long bomb shot. That's a bug with high hopes right there. Target neutralized. Not great. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Not, not the best situation I've ever been a part of. But, you know, kind of unavoidable, I guess. Hopefully this is the last one. If this isn't the last one, we have, we have serious sustainability issues here. I have taken way too much damage. Like an embarrassing amount of damage for how easy this mission is. Alright, so let's keep on trucking. I need to get everybody towards the evac point so that we can leave. And then we'll get up here. Perfect. And it looks like we found RFX BST2. So it adds AP. Oh, it's a stimulant. Cool. So we can do like space Adderall. Nice. All right, next mission. I found Frank Dempsey, the assault specialist. We're combining our efforts to find the other team members. Feels good to have someone on my six. Yeah, so basically everybody's got stimmy pills right now. Stimmy season came, and it was a little bit different than what we expected, but it's still good enough. We're all going to do a crazy amount of battle meth, and that's how we're going to get through this. Just, woo, like feeling good. Straight up the nostril and whatnot. Shit, watch out, Frank. It's a minefield. Go slowly. Watch your step. Mines aren't visible until you get close. They will explode when you get too close. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, so there's that mine right there. I think you just got to give them a very generous berth. It seems like they, they go off pretty temperamentally. We can go for the loot that's over there. But it does feel sketchy. Here, yeah. yeah, you stay with me over here. Having one person walk the path and then yes, the other sir. one stay right on their trail seems to be the effective way to get this done. Uh, grab the loot. All right, so as far as where we're supposed to be going, we can go down this way or we can cut back down that way, which seems to be what the game is indicating it wants me to do. Yeah. Uh, we're going to come back this way. We know that there's a mine right there. Hopefully this whole area is in a minefield. Bullet holes in the walls, dead barkers. Keep your eyes peeled, Frank. There's probably a turret nearby. Yeah. Okay. Don't step on that mine, please. There we go. Just kind of weave around yes, it. Weave around it. Do a little bit of the old weavery. It's going to be okay. There is definitely a turret over here. Uh, we were absolutely correct in our assumption that there'd be some kind of automated defense. 
Should I kill it? I don't know if I should kill it or not. I don't even know if killing it's possible. Yeah, I'd say maybe move up and maintain cover. Whereas you kind of come around this side. Eh, that might still get a shot at me. We'll wait right here. Yes, sir. Does it get like an overwatch? Okay, so get in behind the tree. And then peek back in. Yes, sir. There's some more loot down here. But as long as I can keep dancing out of cover like this... Very nice. Okay, so the turret's down. Can I get anything from the turret? Does it have, like, any sweet-ass sci-fi loot in it that I could, like, hastily shovel into my backpack? Oh, well, we got two loots on this mission. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm a big fan of loot acquisition. I do like how the loot is kind of, like, secondary, too. Like, it's not mandatory. Like, it's little kind of, like, cordoned-off areas to the side of the mission where you can take on the extra challenge if you want to unlock the thing. Oh, that's not a happy noise. Okay, let's kind of make sure we stay in cover over here. Uh, this is kind of... Enemy down. Oh, that was awesome, dude. I didn't expect that to happen, actually. I, I suppose, like, a lifetime spent playing video games would, like, prep me for the fact that everything red in a video game explodes. But, like, I didn't even really think about it. I was just kind of focused on... I was kind of focused on the turret. All right. Well, we've got some boxes and crates and things over here, but I don't want to go near them, given how much the last one, like, explodinated. Apparently, we unlocked some kind of new weapon. Yeah, these guys have secondaries now. Okay. All right. Well, support, move on up. Let's get the hell out of here. And then I guess they are using separate weapons. It's like a different icon. So there's like an assault rifle, and there's like a like a close quarters combat SMG. Okay, yeah, use the assault rifle then. Let's move it, move it. Oh, there's a door. I didn't see the little loading zone symbols right there. Nice. So we've got the... The RRP Eater. What is that, like a grenade launcher? No, it's got a 50-round clip, so I assume it's not a grenade launcher. It looks like a shotgun, maybe? Looks like it's got a spread on it. I don't know, dude. I saw the little magazine right there that, like, reminded me of, like, a PP-19 or whatever. And so I thought it maybe be some kind of, like, I don't know. I thought it'd be some kind of, like, SMG or something. But we've also got landmines, which is kind of, like, an interesting idea to play around with. I guess we could totally, like, tack out an area with landmines and then just sort of fall back and, like, hope that it works out for us. We finally got to the rendezvous point with Gregor, our heavy equipment specialist. We expected to find a settlement full of people, not this. Okay, so we've got mines. They are thrown like grenades, but they have a lower maximum range. Do not step on your own mines. You can now equip them during briefing. Okay. Do I need to carry, like, double weapon out here? Yeah, give him the shotgun since he's a support. And then... Actually, give them both shotguns. I want to play around with it on this mission. That sounds good. Shotguns are always fun, unless they're video game shotguns that are designed weirdly where they won't hit things like 20 yards away. Then I have serious problems. Glad you could make it. Mind helping me with this never-ending wave of death? You know, business as usual. Let's start with some grenades. Let's go. All right, so we've got a grenade over here. Oh, I see how it works. It's like a slingshot. It doesn't give me like an estimate though of where it's gonna land. Oof. That was not nearly far enough, sir. That was. That was pitiful. I thought that maybe, like, I thought possibly that, like, three out of four pips would be enough. But I guess that's not the case. Uh, we got the shotgun over here. Enemy down. I would suggest squeezing off shots at just about anything you can hit on this side. Enemy down. All right. Break line of sight. Since I flubbed the grenade, we've just got to kind of, like, live with the consequences now. On the plus side, we killed two of them with covering fire. He missed his shot. He won't miss his because he's going to tunnel in super close, which makes it virtually, like, impossible for him to miss as far as I can tell from some of the, the spreads of misses and hits that I've seen. All right, so they're all down. I tried the grenade. I mean, I just didn't know how far it was going to go. I had no, like, indicator or anything, so I kind of had to play with it first. Like, it's like trial and error to begin with. Alright, so we've got buildings. I actually really, really like the idea 
of like a residential area or like an interior compound type area that we've got to sweep. That actually seems pretty cool to me. It gives it kind of a, a claustrophobic terror that goes along with the gameplay. What the hell happened to this town? It's like this one I got here, I swear. Whatever happened here, it's not our mission. We need to reach Ayla and head back to New Karina. All right. Yes, sir. Well, everybody into this building first. I'm not a fan of splitting the party. Like, I'm not trying to get ourselves scooby dude. Uh, looks like there's an A point right there, so I guess that's like a control point for our team. We're going to have to take that at some point. It looks like there are numerous A points and B points. Okay, I do want to sweep these buildings for loot, though, and now that we've verified that I'm pretty sure there's nothing in here. Yeah, I don't see anything around the crates. I don't know if loot is going to show up, like, independent of line of sight. Well, I'll have everybody just kind of like sweep for a second. We'll go through and check all the little corners and whatnot that we can't see. Uh, that's a turret right there. Don't like that. Oh, that door is shut. Okay. So apparently we could see through the door. Like it's got like a slat or something like that. But we aren't able to actively like fire through it or anything. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a back door either. So I guess we'll just move on out. I'm not going to go through that auto door right there. That seems like it's probably going to end up with me getting whooped. But if I can move up behind crates, I think we'll be okay. Just got to be careful not to kiss the crate because then it'll move slightly and that might leave some like vector that they can snipe me through. Yes, sir. All right, let's move this dude up. There's explosives right there, so we definitely don't want to set up next to that. That seems like that's just folly waiting to happen. So I, I, I see why the map design is the way that it is right now. All right, so we'll go through to there. You give him the old cheeky peeky and a couple of bullets. You play catch up. It doesn't look like they carry any type of overwatch or anything. So that makes this like slightly less sketchy. And yeah, there's one down right there. Oh, I may have actually left him in line of sight. I don't know. Uh, you move up, and we'll peek around the right side down here. Yeah. And then you move over to here, and we'll just keep you nice and dead center. And then we'll find out if he can be shot from that angle. Yep. Nope, can't be shot from that angle, so that's good. Perfect, fall back. Yeah. Enemy down. Uh, that's sketchy. Uh, you push that forward to use as mobile cover. And then you get him back behind there. Teleporter, finally, a sign of civilization. Oh, that's a teleporter? Oh, there's a wall in between. I didn't see that wall right there. Okay, so it's a teleporter, got you. I mean, I would never use a teleporter. I'm of the opinion that all teleporters are actually you killing yourself and then just making a copy on the other side. So like, even if teleportation technology existed, I wouldn't use it. But anyways, my name is Splattercat. This is Tactical Troops Anthracite Shift. I think it does a competent job of actually trying to do what it do, is, do what it does. It's not like a high budget game, you know what I mean? It's not gonna have a lot of moving bells and whistles, but at the same time, if you enjoyed things, you know, like Battle Force or Templar Battle Force and you know, some of the smaller indie strategy games, I think you'll probably enjoy it. I do like the freedom that the AP expenditure system allows you to have in terms of like peeking out of cover, peeking back in. Uh, it does feel tactical. I do like the fact that obstacles are pushable so that you can create your own mobile barricades. I mean, there's a number of things that I enjoyed about this, and I'm interested in seeing what equipment unlocks as I get further on into the game and how it changes things. Uh, other than that, there's not really a whole lot of critique for me to give. I think it's doing things competently. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day. I'll be back tomorrow to do the exact same thing. Bye, everybody.